Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Sports Report, the Archived Editions. I'm Dave Rush in Niagara Falls, along with John Poulter in Toronto. John, welcome to the show today. Thank you very much, Dave. Always fun to chat with you on the archives. Yeah, you too. Always is. And uh, today we're going to cover NHL great Tim Horton. And if you would have said to me 13 years ago, I mean, 14 years ago, before I started coming up to Canada and, you know, eventually became permanent resident, but Tim Horton, first off, not a big NHL guy like you are. And then uh, when I did get here, Tim Horton, that was uh, the coffee uh, shops and donut shops across Canada that I knew of. And eventually I found out that he was a famous hockey player. And we're going to get into it today. So, John, tell us about... NHL great Tim Horton. Well, Dave, you're not unique uh, in your approach to Tim Horton. Uh, when you say Tim Horton to most of today's generation in North America, um, but especially in Canada, they, they just think donuts. Uh, nobody, nobody thinks hockey. So you're not alone there. But uh, to anyone who's over 55, uh, he's remembered as one of the NHL's very best defensemen. Uh, some career highlights. 24 years in the NHL, 20 of them with the Toronto Maple Leafs, four-time Stanley Cup winner, three times a first-time a first-team NHL All-Star, three times a second-team NHL All-Star, elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1977, elected to the Buffalo Sabres Hall of Fame in 1982. Number two was retired by the Sabres in uh, 1996. In 1998, he was ranked number 43 on the Hockey News list of 100 greatest players. And uh, his uh, Toronto number, of course, was retired uh, in 2016, number seven. And in January 2017, the NHL announced that he was part of the first group of players to be named one of the 100 greatest players in NHL history. So those, those are some fantastic career highlights. And if you're a hockey fan, even if you're in the U.S. and a hockey fan, especially back in the in the day, uh, you would know who Tim Horton is. I just didn't. But uh, let's talk about uh, where it began and how it all progressed for Tim. Well, he was born in January of 1930 as Miles Gilbert Horton, uh, named after both of his grandfathers. But uh, his mother always referred to him as Tim, and obviously that stuck. And that was the name that he was known by uh, uh, to hockey fans everywhere. And he was born in the mining community of Cochrane, Ontario. And Cochrane is approximately 455, 455 miles straight north of Toronto. So it's in mining uh, country. Population of Cochrane today is about 5,000 people. But in the 1930s, when it was an active mining community, uh, specifically mining gold, uh, it was a much larger settlement. And it stayed that way until the gold mines began to decline in the 1950s. But uh, Tim Horton was very much like every other Canadian boy who was interested in playing hockey. Uh, first played hockey as a young boy in Cochrane. Then in 1946, when he was 16, he went to Copper Cliff, Ontario, which is a mining community uh, very near Sudbury, uh, to play more organized hockey there. He was noticed by the Toronto Maple Leafs while he was uh, playing in Copper Cliff in 1948. He was signed by the Leafs and he moved to Toronto and he played uh, junior A hockey at St. Michael's College School. And St. Michael's College School was a Leaf development uh, team at the time. Uh, Dave Keon, Frank Mahovlich, Dick Duff, uh, several well-known names uh, of the NHL Leafs in the 1960s and early 1970s came out of St. Mike's. It was very much a hockey factory where you also got an education. Mm -hmm. Two years after that, he turned professional. He joined the Leafs American Hockey League affiliate in Pittsburgh, then known as the Pittsburgh Hornets. A very good team. He made his NHL debut with the Leafs in March of 1950, but spent most of the next three seasons in Pittsburgh and then joined the Leafs full-time in the fall of 1952, and he was a regular with the Leafs until the spring of 1970. In his almost 20 seasons with the Leafs, he played most of those years primarily with Alan Stanley as his defense partner. And that was a partnership that was well known throughout the NHL as one of the steadiest defense pairings around. Was, you don't see that very often anymore, two players playing together for a long time. But Horton and Stanley, they were, they were, the, they were basically the best pairing defensively in the NHL. 
And uh, while he was with the Leafs in 1964, uh, he started a very, what at that time was a very small chain of donut stores, the first of which was in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, for those that are not familiar with Hamilton, primarily our U.S. viewers, it's about 50 miles west of Toronto. So in terms of his career numbers, uh, in all, he played uh, 1,281 regular season and playoff games with the Leafs, and that is second only to his longtime teammate, George Armstrong, who played 1,298. So those mm -hmm. numbers are very close. Mm -hmm. During the years with the Leafs, he gained a reputation of being one of the strongest men in the game, despite only being 5 feet 10 and 180 pounds. He didn't need to be tough. I mean, he was so strong, no one even attempted to fight him. Uh, nobody, nobody dared to do it. He would just simply defend himself by picking up opponents and bear-hugging them to submission. He was that strong. But in the spring of 1970, the Leafs were an aging team heading towards a very long rebuild. And some people will tell you 60 years later, 50 years later, that rebuild is still going on. Still going, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the Leafs traded Horton to the New York Rangers for what was announced at the time as future considerations. Uh, those future considerations turned out to be a relatively unknown 21-year-old center named Dennis Duperry. And uh, Dupere had a very short career in the league, uh, unfortunately didn't amount to very much in terms of numbers. What the deal did was it gave the Leafs a young player, but more importantly, it appeared to be a huge favor to Tim Horton, as the Rangers were a, a good team at that time, thought of as a Stanley Cup contender, thereby thinking that they were giving him an outside shot at another cup at the age of 40. But uh, unfortunately, he never did win that fifth cup. So after one more full season with the Rangers, he was picked up uh, in the intra-league draft by the Pittsburgh Penguins, where he played one season. He then moved to the Buffalo Sabres at the start of the 72-73 season. And his main role there was to anchor and mentor a very young defense for a team that uh, was coached and managed by a gentleman by the name of Punch Imlach, who had also been the coach and GM in Toronto when Horton played there. So there was... A little bit of familiarity there. Uh, they, they knew each other quite well. And Horton had clearly slowed down by that time. He was 42 years old, but uh, still very much a presence on the ice. He was strongly leaning towards retiring at the end of that 72-73 season. Uh, but the money was good, and he was still building that donut business. So Imlac worked on Horton uh, to try and get him to return for another season. And he eventually convinced him to re-sign by offering him a bonus that satisfied his other love in life, fast cars. So he was given a Ford Pantera as enticement, a signing mm -hmm. bonus, if you will. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, uh, it didn't, didn't come to a very good end, uh, along with 16,000 others. Uh, my father and I attended a Leafs Buffalo game at the old Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto on uh, Wednesday, February the 20th, 1974. Horton played only the first two periods that night as he was nursing an injury, reportedly taking painkillers for it, sat out the third period because of the pain. He played that well. He was still voted the third star of the game. Sadly, the following morning, we learned that he had been killed overnight on the Queen Elizabeth Way, which is a highway from uh, running from Toronto to Buffalo, actually Toronto to Fort Erie, which is across the border from Buffalo. Yes. Well, what had happened, uh, the report said that the Pantera had spun out on the highway uh, somewhere near St. Catharines, Ontario. It had flipped several times. Horton was thrown from the vehicle, uh, reportedly found about 125 feet from the vehicle. Uh, it was an announced that the the cause of death was speeding and that the car had spun out. Death was believed to be instant, and he was only 44. Wow. Apparently, what had happened, uh, he had stayed in Toronto after the game to visit with friends and family. He was driving back to Buffalo uh, overnight to rejoin his teammates for a game in Buffalo the following night, the Thursday. Uh, obviously, never made it. A uh, very sad situation. Uh, from a business standpoint, you know, at the time of his death, there were about 40 Tim Hortons stores. The donut chain actually was his third attempt at starting a business. Uh, prior to establishing the donut stores, he had tried to use car lot, which was known as Tim Horton Motors. That was in Willowdale, Ontario, uh, Willowdale now part of the city of Toronto. And then he tried a burger outlet in North Bay, Ontario, called Tim Horton Charcoal Hamburgers. Uh, clearly, that wasn't the success that the donut store was. But the donut store clearly was the right decision. Uh, today, the donut business is thriving. 
Uh, at the end of 2019, there were about 4,390 Tim Hortons locations in Canada and another 600 worldwide, and that includes Asia, the USA, and Europe. So sadly, you mentioned the name Tim Horton to anyone born after 1970, and they just think he is the donut guy. Uh, most of that generation, unfortunately, has no idea how great a defenseman he was in his time, but clearly one of the best. Well, John, his partners really did a great job with that chain, that franchise, uh, when he was alive, and then even more so after his passing. So his name remains, but now it is a big corporate entity that was quite successful. And you, you know, I've gone to a couple of hockey games, uh, Coyote games in Arizona, and there are a lot of Canadians that'll come there. That's usually when the when the Coyotes get their biggest crowds is when they're playing a good Canadian team, and you have the Canadians there. They serve Tim Hortons coffee. The lines are longer than the beer lines are because it's Tim Hortons. You know, I've had Tim Hortons coffee. I think yeah. it's fine, but I don't know that I would go way out. But it's almost like a Canadian tradition. You know, you got to have Tim Hortons. Got to go to Tim Hortons. I do like some of their sandwiches though, when I yeah. drive through there. Tim's is as popular uh, in terms of numbers and customers uh, in Canada as McDonald's is. So uh, that'll give people an idea just how popular the chain is here. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job with that. And he was a great player back in the day. Tim Horton, NHL great, right here on the Sports Archives. He's John Poulter from Toronto. I'm Dave Rush in Niagara Falls. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Sports Archives.